Hello and welcome to my short video series on 3D Experience SolidWorks for Makers. This will be a beginner's guide for 3D modeling basically geared towards 3D printing community. In this video we're going to go over the basics of how to begin your design. Uh, so to begin we hit the new button and we create a new part. You can see you can do assemblies and drawings, but we'll go over that later. So in SolidWorks, when you first start, you can't do anything. You can't create any lines. You have to start from a sketch. And in SolidWorks, to create a sketch, you have to create a sketch on a plane. So right here, we'll select the front plane. Now if we come up here, you see where it says sketch. See the little S in parentheses? That's the keyboard shortcut for that command. So if I were to either click that or hit the S button, it creates my sketch for me. So now we have a blank sketch. Now we can start creating our entities to end up creating our features. So we'll start here with a line command. You can see there's a line, center line, and a midpoint line. So we'll start with a line. If, if you hover over, you can see it creates uh, that little yellow box with it. Uh, uh, two lines in it. So that's showing you if you click there it will automatically snap to the origin point. Now if you notice here as I come across see that little yellow box with a horizontal line in it that's telling you that if you click anywhere there it's going to make that line horizontal automatically. You can come at any angle you want. Here you can see where it's going to make it a vertical line and you can also see the numbers that tells you the length of the line you're drawing. Those numbers really don't mean much right now it's just kind of a reference well actually you can dimension the line to make it whatever length you want uh, so you just click the other end and as you see you can continue on with the line command keep creating your lines if you come down here and close the the sketch to create a box it will automatically end the line command and then you can keep drawing lines if you're done and you don't want to close it you can either double click that stops the command or you can right click and hit select that closes out the command completely and once you have your lines drawn you can come over if you click on the line you can make it horizontal you can make it vertical and if you click the ends you can move and resize the line as you need uh, that works with most features if you click on the constraint, or the, see where it says vertical line 5, if you click on the constraint, you can actually hit the delete button and delete that. Now it's no longer being constrained to the vertical. You can change it to whatever you want. So that's the line command. If you go to the center line command, this creates what they call a construction feature. If you notice, it's got a different line type. It's a center line type. And if you notice over here, it says for construction. SolidWorks ignores these when it goes to create the features from the sketch entities that you've put in. So you can put all these in you want, and it will not create uh, any 3D features from those. What these are used for is if you want, uh, let's say, you want a center line and you want these symmetric to it, you can actually select it and make it symmetric and as I move that center line or the outside lines you can see that everything remains symmetric across that line. While you're in here we can also dimension so if we come over here to our smart dimension command click a line and we can make it any size we want. You can also if you have a center line drawn you can make it a diameter. So here it gives you a radius. If you come down here, you can change that to a diameter across that center line. So, and we can also do a midpoint line. So if we want a line that's on the midpoint here, click there. And you can sketch a midpoint line and it continues on with a standard line off from that. If you want to select multiple entities, if you start on the left, 
and come right. Anything that's completely contained into the shaded area will be selected and then you can hit delete to delete that entities. If you start on the right and go to the left, anything that box is touching is selected and then you can delete that. So now that we've gone through the line, so we have rectangles, pretty simple. Select your rectangle, you start at a corner, and these do horizontal and vertical lines only with this feature. You can come over here and change to a different feature. So here's a center point rectangle. If you click it, it creates a center point, and the rectangle is built off from that center point. You can do but again, everything's vertical and horizontal. So if you select over here, now you can do a rectangle that's not horizontal and vertical. You can do it at any angle you want. Here's the same thing, but you're selecting the center point. And here's a trapezoid where you're, you can change the sizes that way. Next we come to slots. Pretty simply you've got your straight slot. You pick your two center end, or center points of the ends of the slot and then you can select the diameter of the slot. You can do the center, true center point of the slot. Select one of the centers of the ends of the slot. And we have three-point arc slots. Select both ends. And you have three center point slot. You select your center point. Come over here to your start point. You always want to start on the left, the left end of the slot. Come over to the right end of the slot. So if you're doing this on the bottom, you want to come over here to the Next, we have the circle command. You have just a circle where you select the center line, select your radius. Again, don't you don't have to worry about the numbers because you can come in here and dimension that. So there's 1.5 radius or diameter, excuse me. If you come over here, you can actually change that to a radial dimension. So that's Diametral, you can change that to radius. If you want to make that a one inch radius, just if you double click on it, it'll open up the box and you can change the dimension. I'll go into dimensioning uh, more thoroughly in another video. So if we hit Control A, excuse me, get out of command first, hit Control A, that will select all the entities on the screen and we can hit delete and delete them all. So next we have arcs, same thing with the uh, arc slot. Pick your center line, start at the left over here, come to the right, there's your arc. If you're doing it below, you've got to do it the other way. That's a center point arc. If we have, let's say we have two lines we want to cap the ends with an arc, you can do a tangent arc. So you select your end point, your end point, and you can see it. That's the little symbol for tangent. So these two are tangent. So no matter what you do with these entities, the arc will always remain tangent. So you can mainly create a slot if you want to. You have a three point arc. So if you want. Select your two endpoints, then create your arc that way. Next, we have polygon. You select your center point. You're creating a circle that the polygon is going to be uh, either inscribed or circumscribed around. So you select your center point, you select your radius, and you can see here you can change it the the number of sides. Here you can change the diameter of the circle. You 
you can also dimension that circle it's a polygon next we have spline it basically just creates a spline from the endpoints you select it creating tangent arcs when you get to the end if you double click that will end the spline otherwise it's kind of hard to if you hit select it will end at the previous uh, selection point next we have the ellipse select your center your one end and your other Now if you have two lines that you want to create a sketch fillet on, you can select the fillet command, put in your size, and you can either select the corner and it will automatically choose the two lines on either side to put the fillet in, or you can select both lines and it will put the corner or the fillet in the corner. The same thing goes for you can also use the chamfer tool. So it starts with equidistant. So if I select these two, it'll put in an equidistant chamfer. Both of those are the same. If you take the equal distance off, you can either change length one or length two, or you can go distance and angle. So if you want, like I say, a 20 degree lead in chamfer, you can see we're at 20 degree angle in our 0.393 chamfer. I'm going to briefly go through the sketching of text. If you want to do 3D text, you have to start with either a line or an arc to create your sketch or your text on. So I'll just draw a line, select the text command, pick your line, and here you can change your options for justification. Can go above and below. Here you can change the font. So another option you have is if you have a part that's symmetric across the center line, there's this feature up here which is dynamic mirror. So if you select that, anything you draw from here on out will be mirrored across this line. So if I want to, say, draw something that's going to end up as a cylinder, you can see as I draw, it automatically mirrors across the other side. Here we have the trim and extend commands. So if I want to, say, trim this line, you click and hold, drag it across, it will trim those lines off at the nearest intersection point, which happened to be this line. There's also the extend command, which does the same thing. It will automatically extend, extend the line to the next uh, feature available. If you select this line, it will automatically extend it out to the next line. It's drawing, giving an error because I have the dynamic mirror on. So if I turn that off, now if I go to extend, select that line, you can see where it's going to extend it out to the next entity available. And that pretty much covers most everything we're going to do as far as drawing sketches from scratch. There's other options where you can offset the entities you have on your screen after I select deselect that command you can offset the 
So here is if you want to convert other entities on an existing part into a new sketch. I'll go over that in a future video. That basically wraps everything up here. Uh, thanks for watching and please leave a comment or questions below.